Oh, good morning. It is very early and very smoky here. I'm out here with the dogs just doing basic garden maintenance. It's at this cool little lull that I'm really appreciating right now where I don't have to be planting anything. I'll show you guys what I planted in our last video. We've had some things start to come up. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose my hat or my head. Uh, I've had some seed starts coming up from the last video and we're just kind of in maintenance mode, which is nice because it's not like get out here at 6 a.m. so that you can get all this hard labor done. It's more like get out here at 6 a.m. so you can enjoy the garden and make sure everything has what it's needing right now. So it's not as strenuous work, but I am not complaining about that. For those of you who don't know, I live in a part of Canada called the Okanagan or the Okanagan Valley. It's this valley in BC where every now and then everything catches on fire. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of local fires right now and some of them are controlled, some of them aren't controlled. Uh, there's a few fires right close to Silver Star Mountain Resort. Uh, Vernon, which is a town near where I live, has had four or five evacuation notices and it is smoky enough that I cannot see the mountain range across the street from me. I'm gonna get taken out by Eden's rope here. She's doing the morning patrol, but I wanted to show you guys. It's starting to clear up over on this side a little bit. You can see the mountain there in the distance, but it does give everything this kind of eerie orange glow. There are water bombers, helicopters, and just so much aerial support. Oh, you can hear the water bombers. We don't burn here. We don't burn. Everything just burns around us. We don't burn in this valley. That's the rules. I mentioned that I'm in the Okanagan Valley and I wanted to touch on the fire season because I'm curious to see if you guys have any information about what smoky air might do to how vegetables taste. I know that when we have a very intense fire season here in the valley that a lot of the vineyards, their vintages from that year will have very specific flavors because of the air quality. It gets so specific that even if like certain parts of the Okanagan are burning and there's more pine trees or more uh, cedar trees or the variety of what's burning often affects the smoke flavor added into the grapes from specific vineyards. So if it does something to the grapes, I'm sure that it'll probably have some type of effect on the vegetables I'm growing. I have no way of really telling what that effect is because all of this garden will be like the first time I'm growing any of these things. So maybe next year if there is no fires, I'll be able to do a bit of a B comparison. I mean, I don't hate the idea of having smoky tomatoes, though. Sounds kind of good. Lefty Lucy. There's so many bumblebees out here right now on all this little clover. Can you see them? <laughs> Just spent 10 minutes trying to fix a hose. And while it is no longer falling apart, it is still spraying everywhere. Irrigation. Coming right up. There is a lot of leafy goodness happening in this courgette zucchini cucumber bed. So much so that you can't see the cosmos or the pepper plants or anything else that I've planted in there. So we're just going to trim back some of the leaves that are super big and have a little bit of damage. Hopefully increasing airflow, reducing the likelihood of getting things like powdery mildew and making sure that the pollinators, the bees can find those big yellow flowers and get us some courgettes here. We've got one big one down at the end that we're going to harvest. I saved harvesting it so that you guys could see the first harvest of anything out of the garden this year. Mom was going to take it with her, but I asked if I could uh, save it for a garden tour so you guys could be privy to the first haul. A single zucchini, but hey, it still counts. I don't know if you guys can see. 
Look at all the ants in there. So many ants. Hopefully that's not a bad thing. If you've never trimmed up squash plants, zucchinis, or anything of the sort, the goal basically is to avoid as much crossover of big leafy greens as possible and getting some exposure for these big yellow flowers. That being said, if you've got any leaves that are touching the ground that get wet or dirty from watering, those would be the ones I would take off. You're just trying to take away anything that's going to get moldy. You want the airflow. I'm pretty aggressive while trimming these guys because I have a lot of them in a small space and I just kind of have to be. Honestly, I think the biggest pest problem I'm having this year is earwigs. Check out this little guy right here. And it sucks because earwigs are one of the only bugs that I just don't like touching. It's a caterpillar, I don't care, even spiders, but something about earwigs really creep me out. Can y'all see it? Look at it, it's so big! It's like very thick as opposed to long. <laughs> ah! See? Earwig! Oh, gonna be a problem. Our first fruit. First zucchini. Do you like zucchini? Hey, you can eat it. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. It's great garden help. Unfortunately, you can't defend the garden from earwigs, can ya? Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to do that? So I have four Black Beauty zucchini plants in this bed, and I have been severely pruning them. Next year, I think I'll plant three. This is a little bit too much, especially because we've got four cucumber plants here at the back trellising up. It's a lot of leafy greens and I just don't want, I don't want the mildew to set in earlier than it's inevitably going to, so. Each of these plants will get more than enough sun but we've got exposed flowers and we pruned out underneath the plant so some good airflow can happen. Lots of ants and lots of earwigs. One really big takeaway today for me is earwig research. I need to figure out how much of an issue these guys could be in the garden for me. I also have this guy right here, who is a volunteer. He snuck in this garden bed. Hi, Ripley. I don't know what he is. Obviously some type of squash. It could be one of three things. It could be a winter butternut squash, a spaghetti squash, or a fairy tale pumpkin. And that's out of the seeds that I had even in the soil at any point this year. So I'm going to let it grow here, I guess. We'll see how it does. Our marigolds are starting to bloom, and the calendula is forming a lot of buds, should be blooming shortly as well. These two big pepper plants in here, I got them in the ground pretty early, and I thought that they might be done by accident, like too soon in the season, but look at those flowers. Looks like we're actually going to get a fair share of peppers off these bad boys this year. We also have some spiky suyo long cucumbers forming. Lots of flowers down at the bottom. I pruned these guys back a little bit too to get some more airflow in them. Oh, I'm gonna get this leaf back here. Doesn't look like a happy leaf. Now, the cosmos can get some sun. Same with this big chamomile plant. These guys are going to be blooming here soon. And then we've got our Malbar spinach putting on some real true leaves there. Getting ready to hopefully produce some good leafy greens throughout the summer. 
In our last garden tour, I said that I had two varieties of cucumbers, and I didn't let you guys know what this variety was. This is actually just the classic market moor. Lots of flowers in there. Oh, I'm going to take this yucky little leaf out. Just try and keep things dry and off the ground. It's been about a week since I took you guys to the garden last. Um, a lot of our tomatoes have started to bush out a lot more. I've been pruning away the suckers, but I've not done like a bottom up prune. Like, you know how you leave about a foot from the soil to where you have like the foliage of the tomato plant? That's gonna be my goal. I just wanna make sure that they're tall enough, happy enough, and I can see that they're growing enough before I kinda do like a trim up to make them look like tomato trees instead of just tomato vines. You guys saw me sow some seeds in our last tour, so I'm going to show you these little starts that are coming up. I did another round of root vegetables, so a few different varieties of beets, radishes, and rutabagas, as well as some basil because, like you guys saw in the last tour, my basil this year is not doing so hot. <laughs> so in the front triangle space of our tomato bed here, I've got some baby bull's blood beets coming in and then I just aggressively sowed Thai basil. There's a lot of it. I was not sure if these seeds were going to germinate but they did. So got a lot of Thai basil coming in and two neat little rows of some bull's blood beets. The Tiny Tim tomatoes here in the front are still extremely tiny. They look happy and healthy. I'm going to stop pruning off the flowers and just let them start it to produce and just kind of see what happens. I don't know how they got dwarfed, but they obviously did. We'll see what goes on. This row of Manitoba tomatoes is looking pretty gnarly. I'm going to do a good prune job coming up shortly, but they've all grown about probably two inches and a lot of foliage since you guys were here last. I have been pruning back some flowers on the tomatoes and not letting them produce right now because I wanted them to bulk out a little bit more. The only ones that I have been allowing to set flowers are these indeterminate early girls because they will continue to produce. So if they start producing now, I'm not too worried about it. Look at them, they're happy. A little bit of leaf curling, but I believe that's because these guys got a lot of sun yesterday. They're getting big, and there's some flowers starting to form. The celery that I transplanted took and looks to be fairly happy. I planted carrots back here. Oh, look! You can start to see a few little carrots coming up. How exciting. Carrots are a bit of a mystery to me. Oh, there's another one. Tiny. And another one. Tiny. Hopefully we get a few good this year. Our bean row here. Bush beans. Doing super good. And I believe we're getting close to flowers. Lots of shade from the corn, maybe too much shade, I'm not sure. Keep you posted on that one. It's all an experiment, guys. All an experiment. I also planted more cylindra beets here, so they're starting to germinate. I'm excited because they're tucked right underneath and beside these beans, so they'll get a lot of shade and hopefully do well and be a little bit of a winter crop for me. The onions are still here, doing what I have no idea. I'm not an onion expert. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're supposed to flop over. I've decided to just neglect them. We've got beautiful cosmos. This one's a little worse for wear, but the bushing and intense trimming I did on these plants has paid off because they're looking nice. Can you see how red the sun is? Like, 
The inside of my coffee cup is supposed to be white, so that's like a good example, but it's just so orange from all the fires. Our corn obviously is doing great. We've got these two mystery peppers down here. Rather small. I'm going to take this white fence out of the way so they get some more sun. They're producing flowers already. I might prune the flowers off to encourage more foliage growth and let them fruit later in the season, but it's getting pretty light for me here to allow them to fruit later, so we might not get a harvest off of them. We've also got this weird celery thing. I don't know what it is. Underneath the corn on this side, we've got a bunch of little baby radishes. They're doing well. They get enough sunlight, but hopefully not too much so they don't bolt. I did not get a good radish harvest from my early crop because we got that week of 40 degree weather. They bolted extremely fast from that 40 degree weather, and I didn't uh, get a chance to get any actual radishes, but I got a lot of radish greens. So what I did was make a radish green pesto and froze it in ice cube trays. So I didn't waste it, but it definitely wasn't the radish harvest I was hoping for. Like I said in here, we've got a bunch more Swiss chard that's germinating and some more orac coming up on this side as well. So this orac row is pretty tall and lanky. I ate some of it last night though and I just cooked it like a spinach and it was still very palatable. It was not bitter and I still really enjoyed it. So I'm just going to keep harvesting off of them. We've got another beautiful cosmos. This one, Cosmo, every time. I don't know how to say that word right. But this guy, super dark purple, gorgeous. The marigolds are coming through as well. Now, this last week and a half, all of my squash varieties have taken off. There is five winter squash plants here. The goal is to trellis them up and over this trellis in the back and then over the propane tank. I'll show you how that's working out. So it is working, but obviously squash plants have very thick vines. Some of them are rather unruly. We've got some going over successfully. I've got this guy that's looping back through. This whole thing was probably like to here a day and a half ago, and it is just done very well recently. Some point soon I will come through this whole bed here and just thin out some of the leaves. There's like five different plants and you can't tell that they're different plants so we'll have to come through and thin it out but I think they're doing really well. They're quite happy. No flowers yet. This plant is putting off a lot of foliage and hasn't produced a lot of flowers at all. You can see where it's starting to decide that it's going to, but that's the closest thing we've got to actual flowers forming. So the winter squash is a little bit behind all of my other squash plants, except for maybe the pumpkins, but it's starting to form flowers now. And there has just been a lot of foliage growth. We got some strawberries underneath there. I did plant leeks in this area of the garden. As you can see, none of them have come up. I haven't been able to keep this bed as moist as I would like, but we'll see if they'll germinate still. I'll get some good water in there. It has definitely been the week of the squash plants. Something about the smoky air, maybe it's the diffused sunlight, but all of my squash plants really took off. I'm growing about four different varieties of squash this year. You just saw the winter squash. I've got the courgettes, which zucchini is a squash. I've got the fairy tale pumpkins. And of course, right over here, we've got our spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. It is putting off a lot of flowers. It's actually going through this fence quite well. This whole plant, or all four of these plants, I should say, 
a lot smaller than my spaghetti squash last year. It is a different variety. Still spaghetti squash, but different pack of seeds. Maybe it's just how it grows. But what I mean is like the leaves themselves are a lot smaller. Same with the vines, but it's setting a lot of fruit. So getting it nice and woven through this fence. We had a windstorm, so there's lots of pine needles in here. But yes, it is rather happy. These four uh, spaghetti squash plants survived a pretty rough frost, so they were a little bit delayed, and I was honestly not expecting them to make it. The fact that they are here producing a lot of flowers and look to be very happy is surprising to me. A few of our early varieties of potatoes are starting to bloom right now, which is really exciting to me. Potato plants are so pretty. We also have a bunch of nasturtiums all over the garden. I have been harvesting these, eating them in salads, and making some infused vinegars and olive oils out of them as well. So 10 out of 10 nasturtiums. This is where I aggressively sowed a new round of rutabagas, and as you can tell, they took off quite well. I'm going to allow them to set some true leaves and then maybe spread them out a little bit. That is what I did with the rutabagas back here, which I'm going to have to start harvesting soon because some of them are quite large. Shasta daisies are honestly just the most beautiful summertime flower to me. Look at it. Classic. Like I said, oh, let me get you in there. A few of these rutabagas are getting pretty big and probably ready to harvest. Some of them are still quite small, so if I take the larger ones out there, maybe the other ones get some more sunshine and start to produce some bigger bulbousness. The beets are all still getting thick down there. They're looking a little worse for wear. I'm thinking what happened was it got a little hot for them and it's kind of stunted their growth. They are still growing and they are actively getting thicker but not as fast as they were in the earlier summer and spring months. Same with the carrots. They are still growing. I dug down on a few and they are producing a good root, but definitely slowed it down. So I'm not sure how this root crop is gonna go. Obviously things like beets and carrots don't necessarily enjoy 40 degree weeks, but not a lot I can do about that one. My pumpkin is doing really well. It is beginning to set fruit. It's got four or five long spindly tendrils coming off. It is starting to shade out this bed, which is helping it to hold some more moisture. My pole beans, not doing so hot. They look healthy, and they are for the most part, but they are not really climbing. I'm not sure if they don't like my trellis. I'm not sure if the heat has really just done them in over here, but we'll see how they do. I still have faith in them. Some of them, like the one over there across this teepee from me, is doing really well. So we'll see. They've not tried to set fruit at all yet, which is good because they're still very tiny. But I also think something is eating them because look at they keep getting kind of these weird, stunted, I don't know. This area of the garden, as you guys can tell, is really easy for things like bunny rabbits and gophers and whatnot to hide in and then subsequently come and eat the new growth off of my pole beans. So I feel like that's what's happening. All of the ends are definitely nimbled on and 
it sucks, but I don't have a fence or anything to keep them out right now, so it's just kind of where I'm at. Hopefully, some of them will survive. On here, I believe, is baby's breath growing. I aggressively just threw these seeds everywhere, and there is a lot coming up around the perimeter of this teepee. Also, look at this little pumpkin. Look at it. I have never grown pumpkins, only spaghetti squash, and I am so excited to watch these guys form and grow. They are the fairy tale pumpkins, which if you guys have not seen before, they look like they are classically out of a fairy tale, and they are incredible for cooking, so I'm very excited to hopefully get a harvest off of those guys this year. This is the one bean plant that's not been eaten, and you can tell how significantly well it's doing in comparison to the other ones. I think it just got so high up that the bunnies didn't have an opportunity to come and eat all of its new growth, so. This guy down here is not doing too bad either. It looks like he's making it past the worst of the bunnies. Same with these ones over here. There's two going up this one pool, so there is hope for the beans. They're just not doing the bestest out of all of the garden, so. We've got raspberries, my friends. We've got a lot coming in. Some of them are ripe already, which is kind of crazy to me. You guys were here and I showed you not even, what, a week and a half ago? None of these were ripe, but we had some serious sun and it's raspberry season. It's really hard for me to express to you the scale of these bushes but this raspberry let's just say is at my hip height I am five six and this red little raspberry here comes out as high as my hip you can actually see the dirt right in there that's about two feet off of the actual ground which is down here super hard to give you guys context but this is a jungle of raspberries and I am so excited. We are going to get a massive harvest, obviously, because it's already happening. Look at them all. Ripley's on bunny and bird patrol. He's gonna protect these beans for me. Right, Rip? I absolutely love raspberries. Mmm. Mmm first raspberries of the year. They are delicious. Oh my goodness. There is no smoky fire flavor, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to notice any of the influence of fire season here in the Okanagan with the vegetables and the fruit that we produce, but the fact that we came out here today, we got a good old fat zucchini, some raspberries. I'm a happy camper. I'm going to end the tour there. I've got some potatoes to go and take care of. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning in the garden. I will see you guys again very shortly. Have a good rest of your week. Live long and prosper. Bye.